Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video tutorial on deep learning with Keras. In our last video tutorial, we have discussed on binary classification and today we are going to focus on multi-class classification using Keras. Let's start the session. Multi-class classification is a classification task that consists of more than two classes. So, we mention the number of classes as n. Outside of regression, multi-class classification is probably the most common machine and deep learning task. In classification, we are presented with a number of training examples divided into n separate classes and we build a model to predict the class to which the new point belongs. Almost every neural network can be made into a classifier by simply taking a softmax function into the last layer. In the below section, I have added few examples. Predicting animal class from an animal image is an example of multi-class classification where each animal can belong to only one category. Predicting the digits from the handwritten text data is another example of multi-class classification. In this section, we will discuss the multi-layer perception for basic multi-class classification. Like any other model, it starts with input nodes. These are the features that represent examples we want our neural network to learn from. These input data will go through multiple hidden layers. In multi-class classification, the neural network has the same number of output nodes as the number of classes. Each output node belongs to some class and output results from that class. Results from the last layer are passed through a softmax layer. The softmax function creates a probability distribution over n classes and produce an output vector of length n. Each element of the vector is the probability that the input belongs to the corresponding class. The most likely class is chosen by selecting the index of that vector having highest probability. In today's demonstration, we are going to use Keras built-in MNIST dataset. This MNIST dataset is one of the most common datasets used for image classification and accessible from many different sources. MNIST contains 60,000 training images and 10,000 testing images taken from American Census Bureau. Im Our main focus will be predicting digits from test images. Let's go to Jupyter to work with multi-class classification. First, we import sequential model API from Keras. In this demonstration, we use dense and dropout layers, so we have to import them from Keras. These two categorial will help us to convert a class vector into binary matrix. This is available in Keras utils and we have to import this. We will also import RMS prop optimizer from the Keras. This plot model will help us to display our models. Keras dataset contains MNIST and we will import these. We will also import PyPlot from matplotlib and uh, numpy. I'm executing this. Now we load MNIST dataset from Keras. This load data will load the data and split it into training and test set. Xtrain and Xtest contain grayscale RGB code while Ytrain and Ytest contain labels from 0 to 9 which represents which number they actually are. To visualize any training data, we can get help from matplotlib library. To display associated y value, we can use this print function. Let's execute it. So this is the training image available in the position 298 and the associated y value is this 3. You can choose any image and its associated y value from the data set. In this section, we reshape our data and also normalize them. Our image size is 
28 by 28. This reshape function will convert the dimension into 784. Next, we convert the data type into float32. This stype function will help us to do so. Now, we normalize the RGB data by dividing it to the max RGB value which is 255. Finally, we convert the Y vectors into binary matrix using this two categorical function. This print statement will display the shape of the training and test data sets. Let's run it. So our input data contains 60,000 images with the dimension 784. So the input dimension of my model will be 784. Similarly, as the output dimension is 10, the final output layer of the model will contain 10 nodes. Now we construct a sequential model with dense and dropout layers. First we construct a dense layer with 512 neurons. As this is the first layer, we have to specify the input dimension. So in the first hidden layer, there will be 784 inputs and 512 outputs. We use the ReLU as the activation function. The next one is another dense layer with 256 neurons. Then a dropout layer with 0.2. Dropout is a technique used to prevent model from overfitting. This dropout will reduce 20% inputs at the time of model training. After that we have another dense layer with 64 neurons. Finally, we have a dense output layer with the activation function softmax. It converts the result into probability values and data is classified into a corresponding class that has the highest probability value. As we have 10 classes, the final dense layer will contain 10 nodes. Means there will be 10 outputs from the model. Let's execute and plot this model. So the first input layer contains the same dimension 784 in the input and outputs. In the first dense layer, the input dimension is 784 and the output dimension is 512. Then we have another dense layer and a dropout layer with 0.2. Then another dense layer with the input dimension 256 and output dimension 64. And final output layer has the input dimension 64 and the output dimension 10. Now we compile our model. As this is a multi-class classification, we will use categorical cross entropy as loss function. We set RMS prop as optimizer. It divides the learning rate for a weight by a running average of the magnitudes of recent gradients for that weight. We also use categorical accuracy as matrix. Let's compile it. It's time to train our model with training data set. We set epoch as 10 so it will iterate 10 times. The batch size is 128. As our training data set contains 60,000 samples so there will be 469 batches of 128 uh, samples each. This verbose zero will train the model silently. Let's train it. Now model evaluation. We will evaluate our model using test data set. This evaluate function will return the loss and accuracy of the model. This line will display them in percentage. Let's execute this. So our model is more than 90 8% accurate for our test data set. Finally, model prediction. We will predict outcomes for the test images. We will predict using this predict function. This argmax function returns the index of the maximum value present in the input index. Finally, this loop statement will display first 20 predictions and expected values. Let's execute this. For the first 20 images, the predicted and expected results are same. It confirms that our model correctly predicts the digits. That's all from Jupyter. We are now returning to presentation. 
Today, we have worked with the multi-class classification using MNIST dataset from Keras. And our model could predict the outcomes with the accuracy more than 98%. So that's all for today. See you in the next tutorial.